animation operator is this okay for for any state and similarly for the beta similarly for the beta beta mu k this is one set of beta mu k dagger this is beta mu of minus k so i would have beta 1 mu would this is 1 and beta mu 1 dagger would be beta mu minus 1 and similarly for 2 and 3 and so on okay and now we should try to see so positive frequency modes the negative frequency modes they get related to the positive frequency modes so let us now try to see what are what do we call as positive and negative frequency modes and how do we get particle interpretation in a quantized field theory and similarly we would have it in the string theory so we let us retain these results on both these sides and let's now do uh, <coughs> so our aim is to understand these things better and the the idea is to uh, these things follow from you see this part this part in the string this describes the center of mass motion of the string and this also describes the center of mass motion of the string so if you sum up the two x mu is a sum of this and this left moving and right moving so sum of this and sum of this is describes the center of mass motion of the string and sum of this second part and sum of this part this describes the oscillations or vibrations of the string in the space time manifold yes but how can you say center of mass of this string if you couldn't put any mass in the string uh, i mean this string is like it's not a massive object right Yes. So how can you talk about the center of mass? No, this is just, uh, uh, let us say this is analogous to the, it describes the center of mass motion of the string. So actually this is analogous to a, if you have this kind of equation for a free particle, then you solve it. Then you have x dot equal to some constant. Let me call it, let me just put mu here. So this would be p mu. You got so one. you're just using the term for the sake of the analogy, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. And and then x mu would be tau plus yet another constant x mu. So actually x mu and p mu right away are the two integration constants. Yeah. I mean, if you consider just the free motion of a free particle, for example, then you would get x mu is something like x mu plus p mu tau. Okay, so uh, uh, then this we will see that this is nothing but the P mu L plus P mu R is nothing but the uh, total momentum of the string. Okay, and uh, this plus this would give you the center of mass of the string, the coordinates. Okay, so and and similarly the oscillations are described by some of these things. Okay, good. So now, and actually, you impose that the field x mu, which is correct, that its complex conjugate is the same as x mu itself. Okay, so x mu star equal to x mu would automatically imply x mu star equal to x mu and p mu star equal to p mu. So they are real objects, okay. This could be here L, L, R, R, okay. And then we will see that when we impose the boundary conditions, these things might get related to each other and so on, okay. Like, uh, like p mu L and p mu R, uh, I mean, this is just to emphasize that because x mu h is real capital x mu is real and therefore we would expect that this little x mu and little p mu this integration constants also would be real 
okay and not complex so so this is one thing and well anything uh, else then we gradually take up this and obviously here the let me just write down the the number uh, number density operator for uh, this would be alpha mu k dagger alpha mu k this would be alpha mu minus k alpha mu k and uh, let me put the subscript alpha and n beta would be beta mu k dagger and beta mu k so k dagger a creation operator times the annihilation operator and this would then be beta mu uh, minus k and beta mu k okay this we will now so we would try to understand the meanings of all these things what is the meaning of all these things i would now try to explain okay i have the uh, i mean so that the two things they appear to be related what we are trying to do and what we are trying to understand uh, <coughs> okay so uh, let me let me talk directly in terms of the fields so let me now take example from a real scalar field okay so for the time being we come back to the uh, come back to field theory and in four dimensions okay so the most simplest example would be a theory yes this is the simplest example one can think of and then you can calculate phi this would be the error over del phi the error over del del 0 phi and this from here you will find del 0 del 0 so this is uh, this is uh, 1 half into 2 into uh, whether this or so this is phi dot let me let me choose for the time being for field theory plus one minus one minus one and minus one and the signature of the matrix okay it's a flat Minkowski space okay we are considering a field theory in four dimensions so you write down the action so this is just four dimensional uh, Minkowski space okay you write down the x in the four dimension. Minkowski space you obtain the moment task, and then you can write down the canonical Hamilton. This should be so there is only one pi 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 dot pi pi dot minus L. This you can say pi pi dot minus L would be minus one half d mu phi d mu phi minus one half m square phi square and then you can make you can you can rearrange it so this is phi phi dot minus uh, okay let me give one half here then this will be then zero phi then zero phi plus gradient phi gradient phi and this is minus one half m square phi square and this phi this is equal to phi square and this is phi here so this is phi square minus one half phi square minus one half of uh, this should be there should be a minus sign here you know why when i have this here 
this in the in the d mu phi d mu phi this would be d0 phi d0 phi plus del 1 phi del 1 phi or let me put it del i phi del i phi so now with this choice of the matrix plus 1 when this comes down this gives me phi dot square but this gives me uh, I, I take this down i and it gives me a minus sign so minus gradient phi gradient phi so i should have minus sign here okay i correct myself and therefore so this minus this minus minus plus one half gradient phi gradient phi and this minus minus plus one half m square phi square so this is one half of phi square plus gradient phi dot gradient phi plus one half of m square phi square right and so this is our canonical hamiltonian density and if you write down the total Hamiltonian, then you take the. But the one and a half is already uh, put out of the bracket. Ah, yes. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, so now this is okay, all right.